Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Floyd Richmond, your teacher for music appreciation. On this test, you will describe and identify characteristics of medieval, renaissance, and baroque music. You will identify specific pieces from these periods by listening to them, and you will answer specific questions about the musical characteristics of the pieces. The test will be a mix of multiple choice true-false matching short answer and discussion questions. If you've done your homework and watched this review, you should be in good shape. But first, who's there? Dewey. Dewey who? Do we really have homework? Yes, you do really have homework. And if you do your homework, you should do great in this class. Who's there? Honeydew. Honeydew who? Honey, do your homework before you go outside. That's what I was going to say. Make sure you do your homework in advance before you're ready to take your test. Who's there? How, how who? How will we finish our homework on time? Well, you will only finish your homework on time if you make a plan to get it done before it's due. And the plan should not be, let's wait until the day it's due to start working on it. You know your homework for the entire semester, so go ahead and work on it in advance. Who's there? Canoe. Canoe who? Canoe help me with my homework. Of course I can help you. You know how to reach me by text, canvas email, email, or phone. Seriously though, let's jump into our review. We'll start with the elements of music. Melody is the tune of a song and is its most recognizable part. It is what you sing, what you hum, or whistle. Subconcepts of melody include pitch. Pitch just simply means a note, a sound, a tone. And pitches may be high, ah, or low, ah. The melodies have a shape or a contour, so the contour can be ascending, ta ta ta, or descending, pa ti ta, or they can repeat, bum bum ba, bum bum ba. Hey, wait a minute, I'm getting an idea for like a Christmas song about sleigh, but oh well, yeah, it's already been done. So in addition to staying the same, they can also be mixed up. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, bum. Let's talk about rhythm. The rhythm is the beat of a song and its organization. Rhythm is what you tap your foot to, what you dance to, or what you march to. Rhythm may be subdivided into multiple concepts. A tempo, for example, may be fast or slow. And of course you can speed up and slow down. Meter is the organization of the beats into groups of two, three, or four. And we talked about that already. There are two different kinds of meter. You have simple meter, one and two and three and four and, and compound meter, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Syncopation is where you have notes occurring in places they wouldn't normally occur. No syncopation whatsoever. Everything is happening exactly when it's supposed to. A one, two, three, four. In that particular case, things just happen all over the place, and that's what we call syncopation. Okay, let's take a look at harmony. Harmony is singing or playing two or more notes at a time. Harmonies occur through the use of ostinatos, drones, and rounds. An ostinato is a repeated figure. Pum, pom, 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 pom. If I could keep doing that while I was singing, are pom, you pom, sleeping? Pom, pom, are you pom, sleeping? Pom, then I would have harmony because I would have one part doing one thing, an ostinato, a repeated figure, and another part doing another thing. Remember, harmony is just two or more notes at any time. I could also produce harmony by having some folks just sing a drone. Ooh, or a hmm. And if you were to sing that, and I were to sing, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Again, we would have harmony. And then all of you know what a round is. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Now, when you sing these two or more notes at the same time, they either sound good, that would be consonants, or bad, that would be dissonance. Dissonance produces tension, and tension makes us a little anxious as we're listening to it, and so composers have found that they can cause us to psychologically respond to music by increasing the dissonance and tension and then resolving it. Harmony has a direction also, it's best illustrated in Pachelbel's canon. Pum, pa, 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 pa. 
those notes that you heard there represent music around what we call the cycle of fifths. And that musical movement in harmony is so strong that you can find numerous examples in music of today. In addition, we have major chords and minor chords, which we've talked about already. But let's talk about texture here if we could. Texture is often thought of to be a part of harmony. Texture is the thickness of the music if there are many voices or layers, or if there's just one. Monophonic music, or monophony as we call it, is just one voice singing by itself. Homophony, which was really emphasized in the classical period, is one melody with an accompaniment. Polyphony arose in the late Middle Ages, but really came of age in the Baroque period. The last form here is one that you may not have heard of before. Heterophony is voices moving together in parallel. A heterophony is something that occurs a lot in Asian music, and especially in Asian instrumental music. You'll hear the flutes doing trills at certain points on the notes, and then you might hear the strings doing some form of tremolo. Let's jump down here and talk about form. Form is the organization of music into similar and contrasting sections. Uh, anytime we have a theme or a melody, we label it with an alphabetic letter. Capital A means that that's the first theme or the first melody of the song. If that song repeats the same melody again, then we might say that it's an A-A form. But if it plays something different, we would say it is an A-B form. A-B is two parts, or binary form. Ternary form is just three parts. So strophic form is another A-B form. It's verse and chorus. In strophic form, you can alternate A and B again and again. Theme and variations is a large series of A's, but instead of just A, it would be A, A prime, A two, A three, and so on. So the theme might be something like twinkle, twinkle, little star, but the variation might be ta da 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 di da da di da. Expression is what brings life to music, and it's how the music makes you feel. So dynamics can be used to make the music sound something completely different. Ta, 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 ta. No expression, just completely nothing. Dynamics, you can get louder. Ta, 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 ta. Or you can get softer. Ta, 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 ta. Or you can do the tempo faster or slow. Ta, 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 ta. Or ta, 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 ta. Or you can do it gradually. Ta, 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 ta. And articulations can also be used to make the music more expressive. Ta, 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 ta. No real expression there. Let's put some articulations on it. Ta, ta, da, ta, ta. Trills and ornaments. Pa, 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 pi, pa, pa. Eh, that didn't say too much to us, but if we go, ta, ta, ya, ya, ta, 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 ti, ta, ta, there were two ornaments in there, a trill and also a little ta, da, ta. A vibrato is an expressive form, uh, and you can do it slower, fast, or speeding up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And timbre means that you can sing with different tones. So if I tried to sing through my nose, nah, okay. And if I tried to sing through my uh, deeper voice, oh, I can get different timbres. So if you play with different instruments, it gives us a different timbre also. Okay, let's jump down here. Definitions from the Middle Ages and Renaissance and Baroque period. A madrigal is a song with a secular text. A fugue is a song with one theme treated in a strongly polyphonic manner. A motet is a song usually with a sacred text. A suite is an instrumental piece in several varying sections. Plain song and chant are the same thing, and they are a short, stepwise, monophonic song used in the early mass. An estampe is a dance, a ritornello, is a recurring section in a concerto with a full orchestra playing. The concerto is a virtuoso solo piece. A concerto grosso is a large concerto with a group of soloists who take turns playing back and forth with the full orchestra. An aria is a song in an opera, and it's really not any different than any other song that a person would sing. Uh, it's just done in an operatic voice, which was designed to project the sound throughout the auditorium in the days when they did not have have amplification. A recitative, however, is a rhythmic narrative in an opera with occasional singing. So whereas an aria might be 
pa pa da da pa 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 it would use words in the language in which it was written a recitative however would be much more like and she went down to the valley and there she saw her lover with another more just speech like with occasional singing thrown in there a uh, lute is like a guitar from many many years ago it really has a very similar sound to the guitar an opera is a musical drama with an orchestra an oratorio is an opera without the drama in other words the choir sings the story a chorale prelude is an organ piece based on a chorale or hymn tune. A rondo is a long form with a recurring A section, the A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, and so on. Organum is a heterophonic song. Heterophonic means singing in unison or parallel motion. Using fifths and octaves trace the general development of harmony in Western art music. So in the Middle Ages up until about 700, the music was purely monophonic, meaning one single voice. From 700 to 900, there were a lot of parallel fifths and parallel octaves used to produce the harmony. From the late Middle Ages, 1200 to 1450, polyphonic and modal music arose. And this was called the Ars Nova, which basically just means new music. And that is in contrast to the Ars Antiqua, which was largely singing in unison or singing in fifths or octaves. So the harmony really became much more mature in the late Middle Ages and even more so in the Renaissance and even more so in the Baroque period. Uh, Renaissance mostly polyphonic and modal, Baroque mostly polyphonic and mostly major and minor. All right, we've already defined Ars Nova and Ars Antiqua. Uh, what is a ground bass, also known as a basso ostinato? Pum, 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 pa, 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 pa. Played over and over again. It serves as a foundation of a song. And a composer who employed it most wonderfully is Johann Pachelbel. Describe the Baroque fugue. A Baroque fugue is a highly developed polyphonic work with a recurring single theme called the subject. The theme has two principal sections, the exposition and the development. The exposition is typically organized as followed. A single voice plays the subject by itself. A second voice joins and plays the subject also, while the initial voice plays a counter melody. There's just two voices during that part of the exposition. They are joined by additional voices playing the subject and counter melodies until all the voices of the fugue have entered. Most fugues are written for three or four voices. Once the last voice has finished the subject or stated the subject, the exposition is over. So the development begins with an episode, which is a section of musical material which contains no statement of the subject and is typically transitional in its style. It's followed by another statement of the subject, and episodes and subjects alternate to the end of the fugue. Two well-known fugues are Bach's Little Fugue in G minor and his C minor fugue from the Well-Tempered Clavier. Okay, this particular chart has a lot of information, and this is your listening chart. In the medieval period, I'm only asking you to listen to four pieces. Alleluia Vidima Stellum. I have to believe that this particular song, Alleluia Vidima Stellum, We Saw the Stars, is probably part of a Christmas cantata. And of course, who's going to sing Alleluia Vidima Stellum in the Christmas cantata? Well, it's going to be the wise men. This is written by the most famous composer of the medieval period, Anonymous. Anonymous basically just means that we don't know who wrote the music. Monks in monasteries didn't want to be prideful, so they left their names off of much of their music, and we don't know many of the medieval composers. Uh, Hildegard of Bingen is a composer that we do know. She was one of the earliest women composers. Her tune is called O Successors. It is worship music. Hildegard of Bingen was a nun who worked tirelessly in the service of the church, but she also composed a significant amount of music. Pourquoi en oubliez de vous? Then, in that oblivion, follow you. This was written by Michaud. Michaud is a French composer. It's a melancholy love song with a title like, Then in that oblivion, follow you. It makes me wonder if his lover may have died, Romeo and Juliet. The Michaud Agnus Dei for a cappella choir. It's part of the Catholic Mass. 
Agnes Dei just means Lamb of God. In the Renaissance period, I'm also only asking you to listen to one, two, three, four, five pieces here. Uh, Josquin Dupre, or Dupre as he's sometimes called, was a French composer, and he also wrote sacred music. This motet, Ave Verum Corpus, is translated Hail True Body. It's part of the Catholic Mass communion. Ave Verum Corpus, Hail True Body. Giovanni Palestrina was from Italy, and his piece is also from the Mass. And Kyrie, translated, means Lord have mercy. Uh, Ave Verum Corpus, Kyrie, uh, all of these terms are from Latin. Latin was the language of worship during that time. Thomas Wilkes of England wrote as Vesta was descending and since it's in English maybe you can make it out. I do have to say that it is very imitative as all of these songs are from the Renaissance period so sometimes the lyrics are on top of each other and it is hard to make them out. Uh, Flow My Tears by John Dallin also an English composer is a vocal solo with lute and notice that it's got multiple sections here. So the A section is in minor, the B section is in major, the C section is in minor. Pierre Carabel is from France. He wrote the two dance pieces. Uh, Pazamezzo and Galliard are two different dance forms from the Renaissance. The Pazamezzo is a duple meter, a stately dance, and the Galliard is a triple meter, quick tempo dance. Okay, that takes us through all of our Renaissance composers. Let's look at our Baroque composers. Johann Sebastian Bach from Germany wrote the Brandenburg Concerto. And this is a concerto grosso. And it features solos by flute, violin, and harpsichord. And, of course, the orchestra also. Johann Sebastian Bach, Little Fugue in G minor. Monteverdi wrote To Se Morta from Orfeo to the Dead. Orfeo was engaged to be married. At his wedding, his fiancée was bitten by a snake and died. He, being the hero that he was, descended to Hades and negotiated to get her out and brought her back. This is the lament sang by the male lead at the death of his lover. Henry Purcell was an English composer. He wrote Dido's Lament. It's a female vocal solo with continuo, means strings and keyboard. Uh, it's a recitative, as was the To Se Morta. Recitative, remember, is not sung. It's basically just a speech with occasional singing. Once again, it's another Baroque lament of a, a singer at death, her death. Uh, remember me. Okay, so descending string lines. Uh, Antonio Vivaldi wrote Spring from the Four Seasons. Uh, it is a concerto. It also uses the ritornello with the string orchestra playing and alternating with the violin. This is not a concerto grosso, just a concerto. There's one solo instrument alternating with the ritornello of the full orchestra. Bach wrote us a, a nice piece called Wachet auf Ruf uns die Stimme, which means wake up. Uh, something about the trunk, uh, get the trunk, you got to move. Oh yeah, so it's a call to the church to wake up. George Frederick Handel, Every Valley from the Messiah. This is a male solo, and as you listen to this, you will notice that it is highly melismatic. Melismatic means instead of singing one syllable per note, as in, I shall go down, I would sing something melismatically. I shall go down. <laughs> the next piece is by George Frederick Handel. By the way, Handel was from Germany, but he lived in England and wrote in English much of his life. This is a matching test. This is an in-depth description of melody, harmony, form, rhythm, and expression in the Middle Ages, Renaissance, and Baroque periods. And I'm going to leave it to you to read those. Who's there? Rhoda. Rhoda who? Row, row, row the boat gently down the stream. Who's there? Mary Lee. Mary Lee who? Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Who's there? Honda. Honda who? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Who's there? Cheese. Cheese who? Cheese a jolly good fellow. Cheese a jolly good fellow. If you've done all your homework and listened to the review, you should be ready for the test. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in class.